As we all know, Nazis were bad. What not everybody knows. Slow down. <laughs> what not everybody knows is how big of a presence the Nazis had in the United States. While Hitler's Nazis were rising through the ranks of Germany, you know, by force, yeah. the US had several Nazi counterparts that were trying to make a name for themselves at the same time. The biggest of them was the German American Bund, mm. which at its height had about 23,000 members. And as you can imagine, people didn't take kindly to them. Most of all, the Jewish people didn't take kindly to them. Certainly not. Good for them. Many of whom, the Jewish people at this time, were uh, what you could call gangsters. Okay. So guys like Bugsy Siegel and Mickey Cohen, they would violently break up any Bund meetings that they got word of. We need another Mickey Cohen. That's what this city needs. Another Mickey Cohen. And a Batman. What's and, Birds doing? Ah, uh, dead. Long dead. <laughs> but Jewish hate wasn't just confined to Germans. So on January 30th, 1933, the same day that Hitler became Chancellor of Germany, a good Christian boy from North Carolina named William Dudley Pelly, who was a former writer who had won the O. Henry Award for his short stories once, he announced the existence of his group. William Dudley is such a strong Nazi name. It's like a Himmler or a Goebbels. Or Dudley. A, <laughs> or a Dudley. <laughs> so he announced his group, the Silver Legion of America. Not a good Nazi name. Either. A.K.A. the Silver Shirts. For That's a the, better. They were called that because they wore silver shirts and they had a big scarlet L on them for the Legion. But they said it stood for like love and like understanding and lendship and stuff like that. You know that main designer was uh, Liberace. <laughs> I wish I had wavy hair like him. <laughs> Don't you? Like who? <laughs> <laughs> These people, they claim they were not Nazis, but let's look at their credo and let that speak for them. Only Christian people were allowed in, which is why they referred to themselves as the Christian militia. Okay. They believed that FDR destroyed the Constitution and that the Jews were leading the country into Sovietism. Okay. The Jews, of course, to them being the predatory people Check. who control the country and are driving it into the ground. They said in 1933, mind you, which was before the camps in, uh, mm -hmm. in Europe, that Hitler won't be able to finish his work against the Jews and that the finish of it will come right here in America. Oh, so the final solution was here. Yeah. This Do you was have a Dudley pamphlet solution. or something? <laughs> I got flyers. If you, were. <laughs> if you wanted to learn more about their beliefs on racial equality, they wanted you to refer to what Henry Ford had published on the topic. You know, his multi-volume book series about how Jews are horrible. Mm -hmm. So at their height... It's not a good read. At the, it's uh, kind of slow. Yeah, the end is no good. Bunk. I won't spoil it. At their height, the Silver Shirts had about 15,000 members. Once the war actually started, they pretty much disappeared. Mm -hmm. So in 1936, <laughs> Pelly, he even ran for president as the representative from the Christian Party, which he founded. Both the Bund and the Silver Shirts held public rallies in L.A. The Silver Shirts had chapters in Inglewood, Huntington Park, Baldwin Park, Long Beach. All strong Christian white areas. Yeah, yeah. Inglewood. <laughs> Baldwin Park. <laughs> Things got so bad that in 1936, out of concern over the rise of fascism in Europe as well as at home, the Hollywood Anti-Nazi League was formed to push back. It was made up entirely of film industry people like Ernst Lubitsch, Eddie Cantor, Dashiell Hammett, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Hammett. Chico Marx. I was going to bring up Dashiell Hammett when you brought up birds. I'm like, nobody's going to know who he is. But Dashiell Hammett was there? Mm -hmm. I like him. He's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. He's a tough Jew lover. <laughs> Ew, maybe I don't want to read the books anymore. Go <laughs> or is it just about bar mitzvahs and all this stuff? <laughs> so the Warner Brothers, they also supported the Anti-Nazi League, which is why they made fun of Hitler so much mm -hmm. in their Looney Tunes. Yes. The other Jewish studio heads, they made movies around this time that were anti-Hitler and anti-racism allegories, which caused backlash against Hollywood for influencing the public with movie propaganda that mm -hmm. would kind of lead the country into war but all most of this criticism came from noted racists like joe kennedy and charles Lindbergh. <laughs> by 1938 the anti-nazi league had 5,000 members so of course they were accused by the house un-american activities community of being communists the uac the huac huac huac, huac. they so, are talked about very heavily in uh james Alroy's big nowhere it's very good very good. Uh, Is he a Nazi? Oh, he sort of sounds like one sometimes. <laughs> now, from here on, 
what exactly happened in the Santa Monica Mountains at what was known as Murphy Ranch is a little unclear okay. because once the war was over, people who had sympathized with the Nazis or actually were Nazis rarely liked to talk about it, right. especially the ones that were living in Hollywood and were trying to keep a low key about yeah. it. So in 1933, a Jesse M. Murphy bought a huge plot of land up Rustic Canyon in what is now Will Rogers State Historic Park from none other than Will Rogers. That all makes sense, only Jesse M. Murphy didn't exist outside of this deal. Like, there was no record of really? a Jesse M. Murphy outside of here. I read that it was possible that Jesse Murphy was a thumbtack millionaire that lived in, like, Pasadena or something, <laughs> but I can't find any proof to back that wow. up. Wow. Yeah, and I read that off of uh, Goebbels.com. <laughs> <laughs> Goebbels.com. <laughs> the Daily Goebbels. <laughs> the name, it was likely a front. What was true was who ended moving onto that land, Winona and Norman Stevens. Norman was an engineer from the silver mines of Colorado. Mm -hmm. Winona was the daughter of a wealthy industrialist, maybe a thumbtack millionaire heiress. Who knows? She had a very deep belief in the occult and all things mystical. And unfortunately for her, she fell into a crowd where she met a man who we only know by the name of Herr Schmidt. Pretty sure Bugs Bunny got the best of Herr Schmidt, right? Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. I think you're thinking of Hitler. Oh, that's not Herr Schmidt? Who? Herr Schmidt. <laughs> Go ahead. So Herr Schmidt was a prominent member of the Silver Shirts and was supposedly very mystical himself. And he even claimed to have supernatural powers and other lies. I could fly, look. <laughs> All right, you got you could fly. I did it. You blinked. <laughs> he became something like a Svengali or like a Rasputin to okay. the Stevens. So Herr Schmidt managed to convince the Stevens that war was coming, which he was right about, <laughs> and that Germany would win, which he was wrong about. Mm -hmm. He said that the Nazis would conquer Europe and launch an assault on the US, which would cause anarchy to sweep over the nation. So what needed to be done was they had to build a self-sustaining compound where they and a select group of Aryans could wait out the pandemonium until the time was right either for them to emerge and impose order on the country in the name of the Nazi party or to wait there until Hitler arrived, in which case he would use Murphy Ranch as his North American headquarters. God, if it's just Aryans at the end of the world, just kill me now. Hey, sometimes I feel like the world's going that way. Ooh. <laughs> canceled <laughs> <laughs> so in either case the ranch was intended to become the seat of american fascism mm -hmm. so to do this the stevenses spent four million dollars to put up a 395,000 gallon water tank a 20,000 gallon fuel tank a power station this elaborately tiered sprinkler system that was all over the hillside to water their fruit and nuts and water the nuts you know what i mean right you rich, gotta keep those rich crazy water. people so the land it's also covered in these huge staircases that they planned to use both for maintenance and patrol of the area. The builders that they hired were confused of what they were making and why they were doing this. They spent so much money on this that it's believed that some of the funding actually came from Germany. So they planned to put up a four-story mansion, five libraries, a swimming pool, and a gym, but they ran out of money. Valsmella. Sorry. Just let that one go. Ironically, the grounds, they were partially designed by a black architect, but not just any black architect, Paul Williams, who was the first black member of the American Institute of Architects. He's also the guy who designed the theme building at LAX, which really? is that alien thing. Yeah, the alien thing. And then the other designer on the grounds was Welton Beckett, who designed the Capitol Records building. Wow. Nazis. Nazis. Both of them. So it's not exactly sure what went on in the compound, but neighbors saw people patrolling the area in silver shirts uniforms and taking part in paramilitary drills that were being led by Herr Schmidt. Some of the Jewish neighbors even said that swastikas were painted on their doors in the middle of the night. There were about 40... You damn kids! <laughs> <laughs> you damn Hitler youth! <laughs> <laughs> about 40 people probably lived on this compound. Uh, others would like drive up for the weekend, run their paramilitary drills, and then go home. Mm -hmm. you know, weekend... Uh, Vacations. <laughs> weekend SS. <laughs> the place, it was just a magnet for Nazi sympathizers. And then... Pearl Harbor happened, and the next day, federal agents who had been watching the compound <laughs> for a while raided it, and they arrested dozens of people. Schmidt was uh, identified as a Nazi spy, and he had a radio that was capable of sending messages to Germany. So Schmidt was sent to prison, and that's the last that we know of him. 
The Stevenses, silver shirts though they were, pleaded that Herr Schmidt had manipulated them into building the compound for Germany, so they were let off the hook, and they continued to live on the ranch until 1948, when it was sold to the Huntington Hartford Foundation, and they turned it into an artist's colony where Henry Miller lived for a while. Really? So the ranch, it now belongs to the city. They wanted to give it to Topanga State Park. But they won't accept it until all the structures are demolished. <laughs> but it's so expensive that the cities just forget it. And it's right. just like a no man's land now. Lots of neo Nazis visit it nowadays, as well as humans. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can look up online how to hike there. The stuff they built, it's still there. It's, it got kind of trashed over the years. And of course, it was damaged by some wildfires. But it seems kind of interesting. Meanwhile, Nazism is still alive and well in L.A. The mm. National Alliance is the biggest neo-Nazi group in America. They're well represented in L.A. The National Socialist Movement is another one. They had a big rally at City Hall a few years ago where they wanted to get all immigrants expelled from the city. Mm -hmm. And then another one that's kind of big is the Golden Dawn, which is a Greek neo-Nazi group. I accidentally wrote geek here, but... <laughs> I Come think on, I knew what man. I was doing. Oh, 